I am happy today to welcome consultant in brand leverage, Susan Gold, and author of Toxic Family, Transforming Childhood Trauma into Adult Freedom is her journey. I am delighted you found me and were willing to share your thoughts, expertise, and tips with us here today around the theme of clearing trauma in order to set ourselves free as we endeavor, as 50 pluses, to let go of what no longer serves us, to fully enjoy our lives and grow into the person we are here to be. But before we delve into this, Susan, can you please maybe share a little bit about who you are, where you are, and why you do what you do? Julie, thank you. And thank you to your listeners, your audience today. It's a privilege to be with you. And you're so energetic and have such great life experience. And you share it with such joy. And it takes effort to produce the content you are. So thank you for the platform thank you. and what you're doing. Thank you very much. So I'm here because I'm a first time author after the age of 50 and I'm thrilled to be. I've had a very interesting life trajectory and I really see my challenges and my challengers all as opportunities for soul evolution. I have so much gratitude even though it wasn't easy. You know, I right. came from a very, very chaotic household and I left the morning after high school graduation with the dream of going to New York City. And I did go and I became known for matching celebrities to brands, which ultimately led me to Los Angeles. And I was highly successful as a television producer and also in film. But some of those experiences, those traumatic experiences of childhood followed me into right. adulthood. And it was it was challenging to step up and address them, but I did face yeah. them and I was proud of the work I did. But there I was in my 50s, feeling my marriage had gone well past its expiration date. Um, I had a child and I had him late. I was 43 when I delivered. I had bought our family a home and it just felt something was off. I felt like I was being drained. I felt like I was a little rat on a wheel. Yeah. And my experience was it all fell apart to come together as it does. And that marriage disintegrated and I learned my own power. It was a tremendous gift. I had held on to the attention from boys and males in second grade and Billy Fritz. <laughs> and I knew, Julie, it was my Achilles heel. Right. But I couldn't extricate myself, no matter how much friends would say, you're so powerful, mm. you're so accomplished. And I was. But inside, I just felt terrified of abandonment right. and the neglect and feeling less than and unworthy. So when that marriage fell apart, I could face all of that. And yeah, you had that to in a way, right? It's a crisis as an opportunity, right? You were, you would just stay stuck in it and we we know it's wrong and we know we're holding ourselves back and we know we're frustrated and, and miserable, but it takes a lot to rock the boat. So when the boat does sink, <laughs> you know, we have no choice but to start swimming really hard. And then we discover so much. It's so beautiful what you're sharing. The universe did for me what I could not do for myself. Yeah, and that's it what you believe. was, yeah. yeah, it was absolutely a huge gift. Right. I call my ex-husband my greatest guru. Right. He was an incredible teacher through that experience. And it wasn't and that I, experience, right? Wasn't it? You were mentioning a bit offline. I mean, you're, it was a rather painful, um, not, not one of those amicable divorces. He, he is one I perceive to be a narcissist. And I was trying to make him come from a place of integrity. And it was not possible. We got to a final point in what was to be a postnuptial agreement. And I thought our marriage was saved. And he folded his arms. And his eyes went into those cold lizard-like slits. And he said, I'm filing for divorce and I'm hiring an attorney. And he proceeded to live 
in the master bedroom of a home I bought and paid for. And my bottom, Julie, was living on a mattress on a on the floor in a partial conversion in the garage. Okay. And that was my bottom. And that's what I needed to wake yeah. up to yeah. what I was allowing in my right. life right. and where my value and my esteem were. And that's why I thank him. Yes. And we lived in that domicile for a year under those circumstances. Oh. And I held no contact, no verbal contact, no eye contact, because that's what's necessary oh, for to move Goodness. through a divorce from yeah. a narcissist. And, and if you have a child like we did, you have to hold the same contact only through writing because they know your buttons to press. Yes, they know yes. how to manipulate and they're masters of gaslighting. And it did work. And after one year, I could write him a six figure check. And he went on very quickly to his next source mm -hmm. of supply. And honestly, I wish him well. It has yes. served me. Yes. I am out of that debt. I had an incredible relationship with my son. I converted that partial conversion in the garage to a little guest suite oh. where I was earning income that paid for half my mortgage, my insurance, wow. and my taxes. It all blossomed. Sounds it like all that. fell into place. But boy, the fear. Yeah. And the other thing that dropped was this need for male attention. Mm -hmm. And I went for seven years gladly. Alone. Having having yes alone i had one date julie it was a, with a flashy film director <laughs> academy award winning <laughs> emmy winning producer you know he talked all week about this this date we were having and on the morning of the date he said do you mind driving to my house and meeting me here and then we'll go to the event together huge red flag yes huge red yes. flag and yes. i could see it i could see it yes whereas yeah. before you might have immediately given in but isn't that incredible because it's also it takes a mindset right i mean it takes a mindset to take something fundamentally bad which you had suffered under and turn it into something grateful because it it woke you up it woke you up to what you were as you said letting happen and it woke you up to your value and to the fact that no, enough is enough. I don't want this anymore. And to move from fear to saying, yes, I can do this. It'll be hard, but I'll take it on. Thank you for sharing that. Maybe before we go any further, do tell us where you are, because of course, my audience is very international. The speakers are very international. Situated. And of course, you have that wonderful backdrop there. So people must be thinking, goodness, who is she speaking to? And where is she today? Thank you, Julie. So this is out my back slider. It is a photo because I can't shoot into the light. It's too much light, but that's my view. I live, yeah, I live on the prairie. I didn't think I would in Montana and I'm in Northwest Montana. I could walk four miles to the Canadian border and I'm surrounded in bliss. It looks like the Swiss Alps in the back with the Canadian yeah, Rockies amazing. and then down the down the side, it looks like the Nepali coast of Kauai and out front, it looks like Tuscany. I've just been transported into bliss, probably kicking and screaming. I never thought I'd sell my home in Southern California and leave that gorgeous state, especially with my son still being there in college. But yeah. that intuitive voice, it's easier to listen to now. And it was yeah. calling me for something quieter. So I took the risk. And I moved, believe it or not, with my partner. I do have a partner now. We met online in an angel class, believe it or not. Ooh. How's that for so yeah. unique? That and, is unique. Um, <laughs> yeah. But isn't it wonderful? You know, all these things we say never, you know, I said, I will never buy something with someone again. I will never, you know, have a long term. All of these things, all this, all these, in a way, limitations that we're also saying on ourselves, even if it's coming from a good principle, as in freedom, independence. And then it's just lovely to say, you know, listen to your heart, listen to your intuition, listen to your angel. And and sometimes, you know, it's, it's worthy to to let go a little bit of that, I will never and see what happens. But so when when did you actually, you know, because I mean, our topic for today is trauma as the key to freedom, right? And so that's what you talk about in your book? Yeah, I start in early childhood. 
And I was raised by a brilliant astrophysicist and he still is brilliant, but I think he had a little issue with alcohol. <laughs> the right. cork would pop early on the whiskey bottle, 7.30 AM, and you'd hear glug, glug, glug. And he also had issues with womanizing and a bit of narcissism himself. And then right. my mother sued through foods. She was a compulsive overeater. They prescribed oh. diet pills then, which is speed. And I think she also had a mental health issue. So her personality would switch on a dime. There was no level platform and it was very chaotic. It was dangerous. And I was quite intuitive and telepathic, which really helped me get right. through that experience. So how did you get to the point to decide to put this in a book and why? Why, why did you want to put this in a book? In 2007, I was told by an Irish seer I had a book to write, and I just shoved that under the carpet hard. I didn't want to, you know, go through that kind of work for a PR tool. And then I was told twice again. So I just, I just felt it was my legacy. I've had yes. so much experience. I've had an amazingly successful career, but I didn't feel like that was truly my purpose. And so I sat down at the computer like a bulldog 15 minutes a day for a year until I had my first manuscript. And it was certainly a way to get it all down, but it yeah. didn't really come from my heart until I wrote it from my little one's point of view, little Susie, who'd been through all yes. of it. Yes. And that's when I connected. That's when the pieces of the puzzle all came together. That's how I saw the beautiful brocade that all these experiences that I've walked through have created. Must have been tremendously liberating. It was, especially when I saw it in black yeah. and white. And yeah. if there's a workbook in the appendix, because I just, I didn't want it to be just about my story. I wanted it to be experiential. Yeah, that's right. And that's why you're here, right? And that's why you're doing these podcasts as well. It's because it's a desire to help women who are in the same situation, right? And I mean, the thing is, trauma... I mean, trauma can be many things. For some people, it's extremely harsh. It's big, let's say, and, and totally life-changing. For others, it might be, you know, some bad experience or too busy parents who weren't enough there for us or whatever. But it doesn't really matter, does it, what it is. It's, it's what we've made it mean and how it affects us and how it holds us back from happiness, from being all that we can be, isn't it? Well, and I'm grateful that I was open I asked for help. I received help. I tried so many different modalities. Traditional talk therapy was really helpful to get the story down, but ultimately it led me full circle and straight back to where I right. started. So I really needed somatic work going into my body, feeling the trauma, exposing it. What what was the color, the Facing texture, it, right? the time of, period? Yeah, because most of us, I dare say, we flee it and we we want to minimize its effect on us so we lock it in a box very very tight and bury it as deep as we can but as you were saying you know like you were moving around etc we can't go go away from us right we're taking it with us that box is not locked in the basement downstairs that box is inside and every moment that we breathe that box is still with us and at some point i think it costs so much energy to keep that box shut that actually facing it, you know, like you did, and then, you know, facing it is one thing, but actually putting it black and white on paper, well, black on paper, which is white. I mean, that's really owning it, right? It's it's really, and not just you, you know, it's vulnerable. You're, you're putting it out there for other people. But what would you say your purpose is with the book? Well, it's a taboo topic and I want to open the conversation and I don't want to hide any longer. Right. I want to expose it. And I've experienced so much and have come so far. If I can help others jump right. a couple of steps ahead, yes. I would like to. And I have. I mean, even just the workbook in the book is having profound effect. People are describing the story as more of an activation. They're not the same yes. from the start of the read. As they so are by the workbook, end. are you asking certain questions that people, I mean, so the name of the book was 
toxic? It's toxic family transforming right. childhood trauma into adult freedom. Right. And toxic family was actually, Julie, not my title. My title was Magical Illumination. But my publisher said, it has nothing to do with magical illumination. It's a toxic family syndrome. And I, I said, okay, I see yeah. where you're coming from. I think it's from. right. Most people you know, would pay, maybe look it up as well. You know, They're not going to look yeah. up whatever illumination. Magical illumination. Gonna, exactly. But I mean, I get what you wanted to say from it so how you had brought all this light from from inside and your goal and your purpose here is to help other people deal with that and I always say you know that's why I was delighted to have you on this podcast is that there are many reasons why we don't do it before like you've just said and then you had this crisis so this divorce where there was no escaping this anymore you know everything had crumbled so your whole beautifully set up everything in its place crumbled and then you just you see yourself right and you realize what you're doing or letting be done and why and all these you know patterns and things that we believe about ourselves from the past but that you then decided okay I've got to do something with it and that's something that I think that in in the 50 plus we sometimes also have more time for it right because sometimes <laughs> we push it away because we're busy with career or we're busy with children and you know there's other priorities we know there's something we've got to deal with but it frightens us we don't want to open that box because we're not sure if we can cope and too many other people need us right now but then you get to that stage where for those who have had children, that they're usually, you know, at college or and then it's a bit like, OK, what about me? You know, am I being all I can be, let alone being happy? You know, what am I here for? And like you said, you've been tremendously successful in your profession, but you were still not feeling that that fulfillment. You still felt there was something more that you were here for. And you've taken your story and gone to the huge work of working on it for yourself, you know, understanding it, owning it, making all the demons, bringing them to light, like you said, so that you could help other people and convert it into a book. Now, for the people, we're obviously going to suggest that people buy the book because that's already very helpful. So the exercises, it's asking questions that people can then relate to themselves. There's specific processes. Let's do one right now. I like right. have people take deep breath in. I have them put their hand on their solar plexus, which is right underneath their breastbone and feel that area. And then just say, it's okay. And there's such a quieting of the central nervous system and they're transported to a new zip code. Some of them for the first time, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're on this wheel this this matrix yeah that may not fit any longer so it's it's exercises similar to that julie right now for those who, who don't get the book we're talking about you know i always ask for three tips as we go along as well we're talking about trauma we're talking about you know releasing it about looking at it already i think first of all we have to be aware of it don't we what would you suggest you know what tips would you give people well, I don't know if it's tips, but I can share my experience in that if you're not feeling okay, if you're feeling like a rat on the wheel, if you're anxious, if you're depressed, if you're feeling something's missing, if you're not feeling joy and expansiveness in your life, it may be time to look backwards. Right. To explore. And you suggest doing that with someone, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for people that work with me, I say, get the book, try that yeah. first, see right. if that helps you. If if you're really feeling lost, or you need some guidance, then let's talk. Oh, so you actually coach people through it as well. I do. Oh, wonderful. I didn't know that. I just knew about the book. So yeah, and that's very honest of you as well to say, try the book first. And, but I dare say that we often, I mean, I'm a coach as well. So, I mean, I know that, you know, sometimes you need somebody to ask the question, right? To take it deeper so that we don't, I, I know that in some self-help books, I love them and I, and I scribble away rapidly, you know, in the, in the mm -hmm. exercise, but I realize I'm not pushing myself to what does that really mean? And, you know, what next and all of that. I, I tend to stay at the safer level of, oh, I've answered the question. Good, Judy, bravo. Uh, <laughs> and you sort of, you need somebody to really say, 
and what did that lead to and you know to take it that step deeper so you actually coach people out of trauma I do. I do help them through similar experiences I've I've suffered through, which have been addiction, clinical depression, narcissistic abuse, career issues. I was an endurance athlete as well. So being on that wheel and getting off of it, self-care, yeah. self-love, compassion. Right. Yeah. No. Okay. And so I see, I see you say, admit your need for help, right? That was one of the things mm -hmm. that you, you were saying, admit that you need help. And there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that we're weak or incapable or whatsoever. It's just like, you know, you wouldn't go and pull your own tooth out, right? You've got pain and you're not going to say, oh, I can't go to the dentist. I can deal with this myself. You go to somebody who's studied, who's practiced, who's got experience in order to pull your tooth. Uh, I think you have to accept next and be open, yeah. Yeah. be open to, because a lot of us send out an SOS call, but we really don't want to accept yeah. or aren't open to the process. So you have to open yourself. Yes. And nobody that. else can do that for you. You, and no. you have to do it with all your heart. You can't sort of just sort of half go through the door and, and the whole stuff back. And it's, it's a waste of your money, right? It's a waste of your investment as well to do that. So it's, it's, you know, ask for help, let the help be like admit, you know, let them in, I suppose, you know, because otherwise it's, it's a, a bit of a waste of time. And I remember when we were talking before, it was also your, your third sort of, tip I think was was to to face your fear wasn't it absolutely stand up to it because it's always false evidence appearing real isn't it false it's always a mirage true. yeah if we can walk through it together yeah yeah and it, it is more and more uh, as I go through life more and more I'm aware of the energy that it costs us to hide mm -hmm. all these things or to refuse to see them or to not acknowledge them. You know, everything's fine, you know, put on a brave voice. We're not actually doing ourselves a service. We're not because it is holding us back. It is holding us back. And we're feeding the fear by, by being so terrified of it that we are keeping it tight, 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 tight. And that costs energy. And at our age in this segment, I would say we should be using our energy for other things, right? For things which are fulfilling, for contribution, which is something that I find a lot of us are doing in this age segment. We feel like let's take what we've learned, or what we've studied, or what work experience we have, or the experiences that we've had, good or mostly bad, and turn them into something where we're contributing to helping others and to making the world a better place one person at a time, which is what you were doing with that book. So I'm incredibly grateful that you found the the courage and the determination to say, okay, you know, I've had my wake up call. I've had a very difficult and long process of looking at all of that. Now I'm going to use it to help other people. So thank you. And thank you for allowing me to be here and Absolutely. have a conversation with you about it, Julie. Thank you again. for what Let's remind doing. the audience the name of the book and where they can find it. So the book is called Toxic Family, Transforming Childhood Trauma into Adult Freedom. And it's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all sorts of places you can find it on the internet. But if you want to connect with me, just go to susangold.us. Everything is there. And same Us. thing for people who would like further guidance in this process, et cetera, right? As in people who are looking for more help. Thank you, Susan, very much. I will put all those details in the show notes. Thank you for being an absolutely beautiful woman inside and out. Thank you for your book. And to the rest of you out there, get hold of it and think about how you can start clearing out your trauma so you can really shine and be you. And if not now, then when? Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care.